Alright, so a lot of Macs have come out since the last time I made one of these videos and some of which have been, without trying to sound too cringe, literally industry shaking. So welcome to my 2025 Mac buying guide. Depending on your use case and your budget, we're going to figure out which Mac is the perfect one for you to buy. I split this video up into the first section being all about Apple's desktop computers and then the second half being about all of their laptops. I've timestamped everything for your convenience. So let's start with why I wanted to update this video in the first place which was the newest Mac Mini that just destroyed all expectations of what an entry-level computer could be capable of. So the Mac Mini, the newest M4 model, starts at only $600, and that comes with a 10-core CPU, 10-core GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigabytes of internal storage. But right off the bat, no matter what computer you get, I don't expect 256 gigabytes of memory to be enough for you. Even if you're not doing anything heavy at all, I expect for most people who just want some kind of family computer or something, they would probably benefit way more with something with at least an internal storage of one terabyte. Now we all know Apple's pricing for upgrading internal components is absolutely insane. So if you wanted any more than that, unless you have really deep pockets, I would recommend looking at some some external SSDs. But anyways, it's also a tiny computer, which I can imagine can be really great for a lot of everyday casual users who want a desktop setup, but don't want to have to deal with where to put a giant tower of a computer. But for some final thoughts, even though I've talked about how good of a deal I think the Mac Mini is, I do think that the hype around how good of a value it is is mostly limited to only the base model because we already talked about how expensive the storage gets, but the base model this time comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, which means there's less of a reason to upgrade. And I think 16 gigs of RAM is going to be plenty for most people unless you're doing some really heavy work, obviously. And the 16 gigs of RAM was basically needed for any Apple intelligence features. So that's just a win for everyone, even if you don't plan on using any of Apple's new AI features. As soon as you start upgrading to get something like the 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage, which are pretty much the bare minimum for those who are looking at completing higher end workflows with their Mac, you should start looking at the Mac Studio, which is gonna jump up to 30 cores for the GPU and 12 cores for the CPU, just on the base model. It is quite a bit more expensive, starting at $2,100, but I don't feel like I need to say much about the Mac Studio because if you feel like you need one, you know who you are and you probably know what kind of performance you're expecting. All right, but let's start talking about the iMac because I think a question a lot of people are probably asking themselves is whether they should pick between this or the new Mac Mini. So the iMac starts at $1,300, which is $700 more expensive than the base model Mac Mini. But with the iMac, you're getting a magic keyboard, a magic mouse, despite how terrible it might be, and a very very high quality 4.5K 24 inch display. Now, if I'm making the decision personally, I'm picking the Mac mini over the iMac any day of the week. Because if you're a tech head, chances are that you would very much prefer picking out your own keyboard, your own mouse and monitor. But I can also imagine a bunch of people who just want a family computer that sits in the living room or the kitchen or something to want the iMac and just be able to plop it on their desk and not think twice about it. But you also have to consider how the Mac mini comes with a 10 core CPU and GPU on the base model, whereas the iMac comes with both an eight core CPU and GPU. So in terms of value, the Mac mini edges out the iMac by a decent amount. But then again, as I said, I understand if you're in the market for something with a really low effort setup process that's just basically plug and play, then I guess Apple made the iMac just for you. For those who are opting for the Mac mini, I would recommend looking at some of Keychron's keyboards as mechanical keyboard options. MX Master 3 has pretty much been the default productivity mouse for a really long time. And then for monitors, you're gonna wanna take advantage of the resolutions the Mac mini can push out. So I'd recommend looking at something like the Dell U27 23QE. I wouldn't go straight to gaming monitors and expect to be able to play a huge library of games because while the Mac mini is becoming more and more capable with every update Apple pushes out, it's still far from a gaming computer or a console killer, which mainly all comes down to the software. Okay, now let's move back onto the powerhouse computers because believe it or not, the Mac Pro still exists, which to most people is probably one of the biggest mysteries in Apple's lineup and for good reason. Almost nobody should get this computer because even if you see yourself as one of the heaviest users possible, you should probably get the Mac Studio over the Mac Pro. The Mac Pro is only for the people who need PCIe slots because on top of the extra thermal headroom because of the larger chassis, that's the only extra thing that the Mac Pro offers. And the PCIe cards aren't even for video cards because as you probably know, everything that the Mac Pro can have, the Mac Studio can also have, including the GPU, which is all integrated onto one chip, which on the Mac Pro looks like a little box in the corner of the computer. The PCIe slots on the Mac Pro are for things like sound cards for sound professionals, storage cards, networking cards, which sounds super niche, but that's what the Mac Pro is. The 
small minority of pros in the world should just get a Mac Studio and the even smaller minority of them should get a Mac Pro. Okay, now that's enough for desktops. Let's start talking about Apple's laptops. So MacBook Air for a pretty long time has been pretty much the default entry level laptop for those who don't necessarily need the most raw horsepower and don't need any special software that might only be on Windows. So there are three options for Apple's entry level laptop. For $1,000, you can get the base M2 MacBook Air. For $100 more, you can upgrade to the M3 chip. Then for another $200 more, you can upgrade to the 15 inch M3 MacBook Air. Now I'm gonna say it again, Again, Apple's upgrade schemes for storage and RAM are ridiculous. So unless necessary, I wouldn't recommend specking up too high or else the price starts getting crazy. All of these base level laptops come with 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. And for most people, I think 16 gigs of RAM is perfectly fine. Because if you're getting a MacBook Air, you're probably not doing anything too heavy, but for most people, I think 256 gigabytes of storage is going to be a little tight, especially later down the line. So if you're going to make an upgrade, I recommend going for that one. And in that case, you can pretty easily save some money by going with the M2 MacBook Air instead of the M3, if you definitely don't think you want a bigger 15 inch laptop. The M3 is only a slight improvement of the M2 in terms of performance, and I highly doubt most people will notice it. On the other hand, I think a lot of people love big laptops, and Apple finally released a 15 inch entry level laptop, which is a really nice upgrade. Here you not only get the much bigger screen, but also the much better speakers. Those were a huge highlight on this release of MacBook Air. But again, I don't recommend upgrading much other than the internal storage. If you feel like you need to upgrade the RAM, I assume you're a bit of a heavier user. And once you do upgrade to like the 24 gigabyte model, you're already going to be in the price tier of the MacBook Pros, which would also give you the bigger chassis and the thermal headroom. MacBook Pros all have M4. The highest CPU cores and clock speeds are great, but not groundbreaking upgrades. But I feel like People need to be careful with getting a MacBook Pro. I feel like a lot of people who end up getting a MacBook Pro don't necessarily absolutely need one. I mean, if you have the extra money to burn, then by all means go for it. But if you're really just using a laptop for a lot of schoolwork or a lot of web browsing and file management, and even if you feel like you might wanna do a little bit of light photo editing or video editing here and there, I think you could very easily get by with a 15 inch or even a 13 inch MacBook Air and you don't even need to get the 24 gigabytes of RAM model. I edit all these videos in 1080p on a 16 gigabytes of RAM M2 MacBook Air and I feel like those who need a MacBook Pro will know if they need one. If you want a Mac Studio or at this point Mac Pro level performance because they're basically the same thing but you want to be able to take it around then I wouldn't be too worried about missing out on performance that you could otherwise have on the Mac Studio. I mean, you would be working with much less CPU and GPU cores, but you can still beef up the MacBook Pro to be very capable and very expensive. And it would be perfectly able to handle a lot of people's professional workflows. Now there might still be a couple people thinking about whether or not the iPad should at all be in the conversation for someone who's picking an Apple laptop. And to those people, I would say absolutely not. Now don't get me wrong, the iPad is very quickly getting more and more capable every update they make, but I still just don't think that most people can get by with just an iPad. I get that a lot of people want the versatility of being able to draw and type on a computer, especially if they're a student, but in that case, I would prioritize getting a laptop and then just dealing with writing on pen and paper for everything else. I've said this in a couple videos already, but things like file management are just not the same on the iPad, which can be really frustrating when you wanna sit down and do some proper computer work. Unless the work you're doing very heavily relies on being able to draw things and you don't expect yourself to be doing much else, then go for it. But for students who are still deciding whether they need to get a MacBook Air or an iPad Pro for university or school or whatever it is, I would definitely recommend the MacBook Air. Especially when you start considering price, if you even want to get the iPad Pro to match the level of performance of the MacBook Air, you're already in the same price category as the MacBook now. And that's excluding the accessories you're probably gonna want, things like the Apple Pencil and the Magic Keyboard case, which will end up making things even more expensive than a base model MacBook Air. But that's about it for all my recommendations when it comes to all Apple computers, all rounded up into one video. Hope you guys enjoyed or found it useful. Definitely hit the subscribe button and drop a like, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.